as a part of battle of bharat cnn news 18 continues to travel across the length and breadth of the country and right now we are in marathwada we are in nanded which is the fortress of ashok chavan we are with the man himself sir thank you for speaking to cnn news 18 we've been seeing that you've been in hectic campaigning and despite that you've taken out your precious time to speak with cnn news 18 what is the mahal in nanded how are the issues shaping up right now well, you see, the campaign is just picking up. It is just the initial stage. As you are aware, that Nanded poll is on 26th. So it is in the second phase of the polling schedules which have been announced. And uh, the campaign uh, is uh, picking up. The BJP candidate, Pratap Patil, who is the sitting MP of the BJP, uh, is uh, traveling uh, uh, all over the constituency. I am also uh, doing the same on my part. and. Uh, Nanded has been definitely a stronghold of the Chawan family right from many years and uh, I'm hopeful that uh, this time, of course, with the change of situation, the change of my stance from the Congress to the BJP, uh, well, uh, this is the first time I'm uh, going to face the electorate after changing the party, but uh, with my work and uh, my grassroots connectivity uh, with the local people for last so many years it's me uh, who really uh, uh, connect who is well connected with the grassroots the candidate himself has been there for the last five years as an mp and my induction the rajya sabha also has going to help uh, the district people are realizing that uh, the politically uh, this is an important step taken by the bjp so generally i feel that uh, we should be through it's rather premature because the poll is on 26th, almost around, you see that 10 days, 12 days are left. But uh, as you see that uh, Mr. Uh, Amit Shah was here a few days back. Uh, the uh, DCM, Mr. Fadnavis was also here on the campaign. So I think uh, things are picking up and uh, should be good. So should be good the target for Maharashtra, which uh, you know the BJP has also been consistently talking about is 40 plus. In fact, Chandrasekhar Bhavan Kohli has said that they can even cross 45 plus. What is the sentiment in Maharashtra? You have been a tall leader. You've been an ex-chief minister. You've been traveling. You've people you see, sources. Uh, situation varies from constituency to constituency, and as per the candidate, which has been fielded by the respective political parties. So the target is the the uh, at least. There has been a focus on how many seats we should win. They have targeted around 40 plus or maybe even 45. That's what they're thinking. There is an exercise behind this. He's not just uh, saying some odd figures that we'll reach 40, we'll reach 45. There has been a meticulous exercise behind uh, the calculations which have been done, uh, the announcement which have been made. And it's a focus on uh, 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 these seats. And I feel the grassroots feedback, surveys have been done by all political parties. The grassroots feedback from the workers is also uh, an important feedback and input which we get. So accordingly, I feel that whatever they are saying is realistic. And even Bhavan Kule being the party president, uh, he is definitely more in touch with the other districts. So 40 plus, maybe even 45, nothing is wrong. We are targeted 45, 40, so we should be achieving that. So as we are going around, you know, we are talking to people, some of the issues that are being talked about, the one thing that comes out is this fear that there will be a change in the constitution, that the BJP will change the constitution once it comes to power. Why Why is this narrative coming up? What do you think? This is a deliberate attempt, more particularly aimed at the backward classes to uh, uh, split their votes, which are possibly uh, going to come towards the uh, BJP. This is an attempt made by uh, the Congress and its uh, allies uh, to see that these votes don't go to the BJP. First, one needs to understand the realistic position. The Supreme Court has recently given a judgment, not recently, some time back, uh, that uh, you can't change the main core uh, uh, values or principles basic of the Constitution. Structure. Yeah, The basic structure of the Constitution cannot be changed, altered at any point of time, is a ruling given by the Supreme Court. So Supreme Court is the uh, highest court in the country, apex court in the country, and uh, it is the law, any decision by the Supreme Court is the law of the land. So naturally, there is no question about anybody changing the uh, constitution. Number two, 
BJP has categorically denied any such move. Hmm. Even the Prime Minister was categorical. Mr. Gadkari quoted this issue saying that this is being spread deliberately and the, the Supreme Court has given a verdict and even BJP has no such intentions. Prime Minister himself has categorically also emphasized on the same issue. I think this is a political sort of uh, stunt or maybe some sort of attempt to break away the votes which may uh, come to the BJP. So, but with respect to Uniform Civil Code as well, we are seeing a similar kind of a discussion where the tribals have been brought in and they've been told that your rights will not... How, no can, how can this happen? We have a tribal uh, president of the country. The BJP has made Draupadi Murmu, who is a tribal lady who has been a governor earlier, occupied highest positions. And uh, how can the BJP even think of such things? I think deliberately these issues are... See, most of it, one needs to understand the issues carefully. And definitely, there is by constitution also, the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes. These reservations are by virtue of constitution. So, there is no question of uh, making any changes there. So, with respect to Ram Mandir, you're yeah. saying that, you know, there was a lot of excitement about it. Mm. Now that, uh, you know, it has been quite a few days since uh, the Ram Mandir uh, Pran Pratish Thapana has happened, but we are seeing as Ram Navmi comes close by, there's a lot of excitement among people. Do you think that it will be one of the polling issues? Well, I don't see it uh, being connected directly to the polls. But sentiments of the people, definitely, every Ra Ram Navmi on every, every year, is being celebrated on a very high pitch. You see, in, in this country, people are uh, people believe in God. They have religious faiths. People are believe in Ram, Sita, Lakshman, Hanuman, um, uh, Shankar, Bhagwan, Sai Baba. So these religious sentiments are there of the country. You can't say anything that people follow religions. People have religious faiths. They have their own way of uh, taking decisions. So I feel that even Ram Navmi, in light of the Ram Mandir issue, which was going on in the country for quite some time. The Prime Minister has categorically said that we will build a Ram uh, temple which was a BJP's agenda, also a poll agenda and the manifesto agenda. So whatever they have committed, they have implemented that. So that is one reason for celebration that Ram Mandir has been on, a, on such a massive scale. Uh, uh, the, the reconstruction has been done. Uh, the entire city of Ayodhya has been uh, with all the necessary infrastructural facilities, air connectivity, road connectivity, Mandir creation. I think there is big excitement about the entire thing. People do remember that whatever has been committed has been implemented. And I think definitely people want a government which works, which shows results. And that is why I feel that uh, Ram Mandir, though not a directly election issue, is definitely going to uh, sway in favour of the BJP. So currently, there is a lot of political debate nationally with respect to NRC, with respect to CAA. Mamta Banerjee has taken a particular stance. The BJP has strongly opposed it. How do you see that debate panning out? I think these things need to be clarified further. Uh, there is definitely an uh, attempt uh, uh, by the uh, Congress and the uh, Indy uh, allies to distort the factual position, whereas the facts are totally different. And I think on a, on a national debate, that there be a debate at the national level, I think uh, the BJP can quite clarify uh, their stand. It's not going to affect the people of the country and definitely we are working for a more united and a stronger India. So Congress has come out with Nyai Manifesto saying that it will give justice to everybody including the minorities. The BJP has slammed it saying that this is minority appeasement. How do you see that manifesto? Well, uh, manifesto promises are to be implemented by the government which comes in power. When there is no, when Congress itself is not contesting as many seats to, it, on its own to come to power, and whereas you see a large number of parties uh, breaking away from the uh, India alliance, uh, where is the possibility of the uh, Congress forming the government in the center in the near future? So it's very easy to give uh, false promises and knowing very well knowing that these are not going to be implemented. So I think it's only a part of the election once 20, uh, the country's elections are over. And these will be forgotten by the Congress and definitely the BJP is going to come to power anyway because of the large popularity it has in the country. Whatever promises are made by, in the manifesto by the party, will be. It is, this is the guarantee by the Prime Minister. So there is no doubt it will be implemented. So how do you see the future of India bloc? You've clearly stated that Congress by itself will not come to power. Do you see the India bloc emerging as a strong opposition? The opposition is there. I don't think any election opposition is bound to be there. But uh, with the kind of uh, problems which have emerged after the formation of the uh, India bloc, uh, where has been there a cohesiveness? Where has been, been a common thinking? 
what is the prime ministerial candidate of the of the india alliance where what is it heading for even the partners are breaking away day by day every day uh, the, you see uh, one or the other partner leaving the alliance so it is all in a big mess whereas i think the bjp has meant, managed to maintain itself intact with its which is allies is that one of the reasons why you left congress sir because you've been a congress loyalist for so many years even after you left you know it uh, for the initial period you did not really discuss elaborately about it but we saw how it was panning out in maharashtra how what was the sentiment behind your decision you see uh, the maharashtra leadership itself is a very weak leadership hmm. unfortunately the party leadership has not been able to recognize people who have grassroots uh, connectivity people who have real some strategy planning for the party and uh, the kind of leadership with with in which the maharashtra congress is vested uh, i think that uh, the leadership in maharashtra is totally a weak leadership even in the uh, discussion with the mva alliance partners the congress is has been the weakest uh, uh, a uh, member of the alliance hmm. and uh, uddhav thakre had his own way hmm. uh, the ncp of course sharad pawar's group also have their own say and they directly were in touch with each other discussing and bargaining on seats hmm. and then coming to the congress and all the leftovers hmm. seats were given to congress where the good seats have gone to uh, mostly of shiv sena so i think that uh, these people have not been able to uh, gather they cannot face the uh, tall leaders of the shiv mr uddhav thakre and uh, ashad pawar ji and maharashtra leaders have become so weak so the kind of lead people even the perkers are uh, unhappy with the entire uh, sort of uh, bargain which has ultimately resulted to poor performance of the congress as far as seat sharing is concerned hmm. so i feel this is the and this i have been observing for last two years we have been giving them reasons we have been telling them logically what should be done but all have fallen on deaf ears and uh, with the kind of leadership uh, i wouldn't expect anything much to happen in maharashtra so this was the main reason i said better i don't see any future uh, of the party so i thought better one instead of criticizing them i thought better to leave the party and uh, work for the future of the country and the on the state of maharashtra and my constituents definitely so of late one of the recent criticisms against you from within the congress sources was that it was because of you that the talks for lok sabha seat distribution within mva did not work out fine that you know when you were sitting at the helm and you were navigating the talks of the congress with the alliance partners this is rather surprising and shocking i left the congress party on 12th of february i resigned as the mla of the party and subsequently my party position how can a bjp leader decide the congress uh, tickets this these uh, decisions were taken much later hmm. uh, and i was the only person within the congress at that time who had got a real uh, who had done a real exercise about uh, which which is the constituency uh, which congress should contest hmm. why it should contest hmm. the the earlier trends which have been there in these constituencies hmm. so i had done all that exercise very carefully in months of uh, study and months of uh, discussion with all our party people so these people had needed some sort of uh, what do you say uh, 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 reason to uh, face the high command the high command is unhappy with this uh, entire situation and that is why they needed some scapegoat to theek hai party mein bhi nahi hai to naam le lo to kya farak padta hai blame game is the is the ultimate uh, uh, sort of uh, approach which they have taken and uh, Uh, somehow to make up for the part of party workers are irritated the high command is unhappy hmm. to somehow uh, put the blame on somebody else is very easy so i they thought i am the best person to to be blamed for because i am nobody in the more in the party so but you know through the initial phases of discussions we had seen you sitting at the negotiating table we had seen you yes. working through all yes. of this what was your experience through mva because right now the way things are progressing it looks like congress has been turned into a second fiddle uh, in the alliance when you were at the negotiating table what was your experience while well, negotiating with see, both sena as well as nc see when they were the mva partners sit down together or any political party sits with allies there has to be a logical reason why a seat particular seat x or y has to be taken by that particular party there has to be a logical reason the past performances the trends mm. the the current situation survey reports worker sentiments mm. a number of things count it's not that easy that you want this seat and that seat because it has to be logically argued out mm. i didn't see the arguing capacity uh, in the maharashtra congress leadership mm. which would reason out uh, why a seat should be uh, uh, asked for 
and that is why ultimately the talks didn't go out as expected it was sanjay raut all the way who had uh, been able to call the shots and he did he got his way and maharashtra leaders were just sitting quietly and uh, watching but then so when you were sitting at the negotiating table yes, would you argue with sanjay raut saying that these yes, are the seats yes no arguments i could argue out my case mm. what sanjay raut sanjay raut was doing good for his party obviously mm. so same was expected from the congress leader that they do also argue in uh, to get us bargain out to see that they get a good seat for the party which they were unfortunately not even able to do that did it not bother you that the shiv sena and the ncp would first hold discussions and then would come to the yes Congress? this was also my uh, feedback at first they would sit down together the ncp and the shiv sena people would sit down together work out their strategy and then come to discuss with the congress and they two were together right from the beginning i i'll tell you a time will come hmm. when they will leave behind after the lok sabha elections hmm. i don't see the mva remaining intact at all hmm. maybe it will be the shiv sena and the ncp will come together but congress ult- ultimately will either be dragged by this two or it will ultimately it will break down from the alliance these are very serious lapses that you're pointing at sir did you have a word with the party high command did you point it out to them that these were the party problems? representatives were per- present party senior higher higher ups who were interested with the maharashtra they were present in the discussions they knew about it right now we see that within mva still uh, even after the formal announcement of discussion uh, of seat sharing uh, made be seats like sangli yes. uh, mumbai south central yes. bhivandi yes. the congress continues to remain upset at the state level but still the party high command doesn't seem to take note of it as more shocking a party like congress has practically only one seat in mumbai mumbai north central is the only seat others mumbai north is out of question mumbai north is a bjp stronghold and taking that seat was disaster mm. which i have been telling right from because they were left with nothing mm. they had no choice so they were thrusted with that seat and they have accepted and it is going to be a losing seat for the congress good for the bjp and mumbai north central was a good seat now let's see what happens there and moreover a seat like bhivandi which is a dominant uh, minority stronghold mm. uh, which was uh, they had earlier uh, managed to get uh, to field some ex candidate mm. and because of that a good candidate left the congress and went to the ncp so it was that candidate who decided upon this party which party the, the seat goes to and it was the congress leaders in maharashtra who had pre decided about whom to be given this bhivandi seat that because of that a meritorious candidate left the congress and joined ncp and that's why ncp got that seat similarly with sangli sangli was an always a stronghold background of vasundada patil hmm. uh, stall leader of maharashtra once upon a time chief minister of maharashtra hmm. he too uh, had to ultimately they had they too also had left the uh, i mean left the seat and that sangli seat went to the shiv sena so i feel that uh, uh, without realizing that you are losing, losing some good seats hmm. it's just, well it's good for the uh, mahayuti it's good for the bjp sena and uh, ajit pawar so whatever has happened it is internal issue of the, of the mva i am not here to uh, um, support their cause or, or logically argue out their cases but blunders were made one after the other and nobody bothering about it so you talking of serious lapses here you're yeah. saying blunders were made yeah. uh, especially with respect to say a bhivandi seat you you clearly saying that the congress leadership had pre decided yes. that ticket had to be yes. given to if you could elaborate on you know no, no, they had what decided there were discussions about this no, no. there were discussions we have been telling them but both the clp and the pcc had pre said we decided on whom to be given that's why the reason the good candidate left the congress and then from mumbai south central varsha gaikwad is still yes. unhappy did you yes. when you were a part of the congress did you fight for this saying yes. that mumbai yes. south central should be mumbai south central has always been a congress stronghold it was earlier mr eknath gaikwad used to be a member of parliament defeating a stalwart like manoj joshi at the at those times hmm. so i think this seat was a deserving seat but unfortunately <laughs> the mumbai congress president herself was not able to secure her seat Uh, it is rather pity and that she continues to meet uddhav thakre as well uh, she well, went she, and she was left isolated ultimately she went on her own to plead such is a case with the leaders of the congress ultimately they have to go and beg for their seats with some other party leaders what was the support she got nothing do you think situation would have been different had some note been taken of the state leadership and their sentiments well uh, i can i don't know what went uh, how things have after i left i have definitely uh, stopped looking towards him as a leader like sanjay nirupam yes a good leader uh, they have insulted him they have badly sidelined him 
So it's all groupism within the Congress, which is ultimately resulting in a lot of troll leaders leaving the party one after the other. There has been uh, totally a coterie at the state level working on things. Uh, everybody wants to become the state leader in future. And that's why then to have their own people installed in places and all those people who have no merit are being projected. So ultimately it is going to be a disaster and good for the BJP. And do you think that, you know, if Congress would have taken note of Sanjay Nirupam, would have given him the ticket, it would have been a seat where it would have had some chance because we saw those negotiations happen when you were a part. Sanjay Nirupam is a fighter. Sanjay Nirupam is a tall leader of the Mumbai, North Indian particularly. I think uh, Congress required, after the exit of Krupa Shankar Singh, mm. Sanjay Nirupam is the only North Indian leader, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Uttar Bharati in, in, uh, uh, in uh, Mumbai. Mm. And uh, I think uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the man like him uh, unhappy, uh, whom are you? You are ultimately sidelining all tall leaders and they, do no, they want nobody in, uh, in, uh, in, in the Congress uh, to grow. And that is why we have got very small, tiny people who are calling the shots. Sir, even when you were negotiating, we saw how vociferously the kind of research that you did, the kind of things that you had with respect to seat-wise analysis, were, you know, why do you think things went wrong so much south that even a tall leader like you pointing out to the party high command saying that, uh, you know, we are losing out on the negotiating table, things were not, there, there, there was no course correction. Well, right in the beginning, I remember the party headquarters in Delhi when we had meetings. I had given a working paper about how things stand in Maharashtra. Mm. I was the only person who had given a written note mm. to the party leadership saying that this is the present situation, how alliances could be worked out, how what is the percentage of vote we can get. It was a detailed study note which I had given to the High Command. Obviously, I don't know whether they have been uh, gone, th gone through it or they have done anything on that. I am not aware of that. But I have been appraising my party leadership time and again about uh, the general situation in Maharashtra and I was hopeful that something will go down the line and the state leadership at least to be told that, uh, well, uh, you have a approach which can be conducive, helpful for the party. But un unfortunately, uh, I think there is a lot of mess and you have seen a person like Gaurav Vallabh who was mm. a, one of the very good uh, senior leaders in the Congress working on the poll strategy, mm. uh, good spokesperson also. Ultimately, he had to leave. Rohan Gupta, who was one of the uh, management person in the party at the higher level, he left the uh, party. I think one after the other people feel disgruntled that nothing is happening or rather they have been sidelined by people uh, who simply uh, don't want uh, a new uh, people emerging. And that is one of the reasons why things are going bad. Do you see this as a work of the coterie? Because, you know, several senior leaders that we speak to say that the coterie surrounding Rahul Gandhi or Sonia Gandhi I, are not I advising not, I am not, I don't know the working, working in Delhi. I have never been a part of the uh, start circle in Delhi. But my general feeling is that people with merit, hmm. people who can decide. You um, see, today election is a management work. Hmm. Election, if poll, poll campaigning is one issue. Hmm. But ultimately election management, election... Uh, understanding and uh, the general political chemistry of every constituency has to be understood, uh, worked out properly and the campaign has to be centered on that particular narrative which is existing. Mm. So I feel that all these people who have been working strongly mm. on that, or these have been sidelined by some people. So somehow it is not working, I don't know why. Somehow things are not working the way they should work. And that is why I feel in today's, uh, today's times, when BJP is highly organized, they have people, they have resources, they have uh, strategists, they have surveys, mm. uh, they have poll campaigns. So I think uh, to fight a battle, one needs to be prepared. Did you have a word with Sonia Gandhi or Rahul Gandhi about all of this, at least before your exit? It is difficult to decide, it is difficult to uh, have so much time to discuss so many issues. Anyway, uh, what is gone is gone. So one last question with respect to MVA. MVA has announced the seat sharing formula. Congress is fighting 17. You have predicted the decimation of MVA at least with respect to the Congress falling apart after the Lok Sabha elections. But what do you think will happen at the Lok Sabha elections themselves with 17 seats in the kitty and with the kind of seat distribution that you have seen? How do you anticipate the performance? The BJP will have its way in Maharashtra with a large number of large chunk of seat and the allies with BJP, Ajit Pawar and Eknath Shinde parties coming together. 
So I don't see much with the MBA. Any anti incumbency that you would see around? Regarding Nanded or. But challenge uh, any any poll uh, any election uh, is a challenge by itself. So one has to be on your. Uh, I mean, you have to work hard and see that uh, uh, we are able to work in spite of the round realities. Uh, the local issues have to be kept in mind. Local problems have need to be sorted out. Mm. You have to reach the people. Your connectivity should be there. So all said and done, uh, other things also on ground matter. I feel that if this is taken care of, it becomes easier and. The people with more frequent uh, connections with the constituency are definitely people who matter. So this was Ashok Chavan speaking exclusively to CNN News 18. Sir, thank you for your valuable time. All the nitty gritties, all the inside details of what exactly happened in Maharashtra politics and how things went in different directions just as we look at the Lok Sabha elections. <laughs>